Hello everyone. So today we are going to deliberate on the topic of economic reforms 1991. As you all know that Indian economy which has grown by leaps and bounds. So the start of the economic reforms was taken in 1991. So July 1991 India has taken a series of measures to structure the economy and to improve upon the balance of payment position. Now firstly we should be knowing that what is balance of payments. For knowing the balance of payments it must be considered first of all that what is the position of imports and exports. So for discussing upon the balance of payment if we are importing on a higher note and our exports are less so we will be having negative balance of payment. India was struck in balance of payment difficult situation in 1991. Okay. So at that point of time as the phrase uh, is from hand to mouth at that point of time we were from ship to mouth. So why this phrase was used for Indian economy at that point of time because there were very few forex reserves which were left in our forex reserves. At that point of time India has to take certain situational steps as well as certain decisions which were liberalization, privatization and globalization. In these reforms, the economic reforms, the major steps which were taken by the Indian economy at that point of time were more of the internal as well as the external steps. So it was related to the liberalization of economy and the extending the privatization and the globalization of the economy. In short it was considered to be LPG. So first of all we will be throwing some light on the meaning of economic reform. The term economic reform broadly indicates necessary structural adjustments to external events. It includes the function of countries spending to the level parallel to its income and thereby reducing the fiscal deficits. Okay, so if our expenditures are higher than our incomes. In that case, the country is struck in fiscal deficit. This requires gradual reduction in imports and increase in exports. So we were struck in this kind of a situation due to our various policies which were the closed economy. Okay, the, when we talk about the closed economy at that point of time, we were having license Raj for even small for uh, for opening a small shop or for going for a small business at that point of time we need to go through very rigorous processes as well as there were so many hurdles which were imposed uh, just like to get the licenses and there was so much red tapism at that point of time. To remove these kind of hurdles, we have taken so many steps in improvement of our economic situation at that point of time. So one of the major reform was the introduction of new economic policy. So which has helped the government as well as the private players to come into the various fields. So when we talk about the new economic policy, so this was the plan which was in action by the government to influence the production and capital formation of the country. 
so it was started in the year 1991 under the leadership of uh, former prime minister p v narsimha rao and former at that point finance minister dr manmohan singh so what were the reasons for the implementation of new economic policy so the reasons were that there were poor performance of the public sector at that point of time the scope for private sector was very much limited and there was sudden fall in the foreign exchange reserves so as you all know that whenever a country has to purchase or it has to go for the imports so the payment is done in terms of dollars and the dollars predominantly the dollars are to be fetched from the exports as well as the remittances which are been provided by the various people who are residing outside our country so this situation this has been emerged due to more of the expenditure and less of the income at that point of time the international investors were also not that much encouraged at that time to invest in the indian economy and tax notes were also very high so these were the various reasons why new economic policy was introduced first of all we will be throwing some light on the topic of liberalization so the free from direct or physical control by the government in the way of trade is known as liberalization so to liberalization to liberalize it means to free up certain shackles which are been imposed by the government which are been imposed by the various bureaucratic and other structural implications before 1991 there were some controls of government just like industrial licensing system was there which is a very rigid process they were controlling the price import licensing restriction on investments so the economic reform under liberalization they can be divided into four reforms under liberalization first one is the industrial reform second one is the financial reform third one is the fiscal reform and fourth one is the external reform so the industrial reforms considered to be the abolition of licensing except some products which are harmful for the health just like cigar etc contradiction to the public sector that is the number of items produced by public sector were reduced government given freedom to import capital as you all know that these days we are also into the external commercial borrowings ecbs and there are certain cappings which are also imposed by the government on the ecbs that how much capital you can raise from the foreign banks next is dereservation of production units so earlier there were certain reservations which were introduced and they were dereservate due to the industrial reforms which were undertaken producers were also given certain freedom for the decision of what to produce and how much to produce so these were the various 
steps which were undertaken for the industrial reforms at that point of time. Next is the financial reforms. For the financial reforms, RBI was turned into a facilitator. The role of RBI was also liberalized and more emphasis was given on the regulation part. Due to this dramatic change, the banking sector of the country has expanded a lot and it was due to the liberalization policies that there were the number of players which were added into the kitty at that point of time. It also allowed the foreign institutional investors to invest money in the Indian market. So, firstly, we must be knowing that what, what is the difference between the FDI, that is the foreign direct investment, and FIIs, foreign institutional investors. So, when we talk about the foreign institutional investors, they used to invest in the equities of the companies and when we talk about the foreign direct investment they used to directly invest into the various ventures so this is the basic difference between the FIIs and FDIs and there were liberalization practices which involved in the huge influx of foreign capital into Indian stock markets Then comes the fiscal reforms. It relates to the total revenue and total expenditure of the government. So, there were steps which were undertaken to improve upon the revenue of the government and to reduce upon the expenditure of government. Before liberalization, the tax regime was imposing very high rate of taxes and this encouraged tax evasion by the various people. After liberalization, taxes were reduced or you can say rationalized. The procedure for paying taxes was simplified. Non-planned expenditures by the government was reduced. So, these fiscal reforms, these help, has helped India in a big way. Next comes the external reforms. The external reforms include the devaluation of rupee. Now, what is devaluation? When we talk about devaluation, it is to reduce the value of our currency in comparison to the foreign currencies. Why we used to go for devaluation? One of the major reason behind devaluation is in this way our goods will be cheaper than the foreign goods and there will be huge demand of our goods all over the world and there will be huge opportunity for the export of those goods to other countries. So, presently exchange rate is de determined by the supply and demand in international market. Then comes the foreign trade policy. Abolition of import licensing except for some cases quantitative restrictions were removed, tariff restrictions were moderated export duties were withdrawn. These external reforms helped our economy to grow by leaps and bounds. Then comes that what we have gained from the liberalization practices. First one is the industrial licensing. So, there was removal of the various licenses 
there was increase in the foreign investment, increase in the foreign exchange reserve, increase in consumption and control over price, check on corruption practices, reduction in dependence on external commercial borrowings. Now comes that there are certain disadvantages of liberalization. As every good thing has some shortcomings also. So, there was increase in unemployment, there was loss to the domestic units, increased dependence on foreign nations and unbalanced development. So, this because the there after the liberalization practices, the growth was limited to certain sectors, which is the growth was not uniform in all the sectors of the economy. So, unbalanced development is also one of the disadvantage. Now comes that what were the positive effects of new economic policy. First one is that impressive increase in growth rate of GDP. So, our gross domestic product that was increasing after the imposition of liberalization practices. Then is the IT industry, information technology. So, it has gone a sea change after the liberalization practices. Increase was also seen in the government revenue just like increase in national income has been experienced. Increase in foreign exchange reserves, flow of private and foreign investment has been significantly high. Recognition of India as an emerging power, shift from monopoly market to competitive market and decline in poverty. So, these were the positive effects. Then the ne negative effects of new economic policy. So, there was a neglect to agricultural sector. Urban concentration of growth was high but neglected. The rural masses preferences for handicraft were low. There is cultural erosion in the country and it is like economic colonization. So, in the recent past, we also have seen that what China is doing with the other economies just like it has done with Sri Lankan economy. Firstly, they are providing the loans and after that, the com when the country is unable to pay those loans, so they used to acquire some land for their very uh, personal reasons. Next comes the privatization. So, when we define privatization, privatization can be defined as the transfer of function, activity or organization from public sector to private sector. Two ways for privatization, first is sale of public sector units to private sector, withdrawal of public sector units to the joint sector. Now comes the objectives of privatization. To increase efficiency and competitive power of the enterprises, to strengthen industrial management, to earn 
more foreign exchange to make optimum use of resources to achieve rapid industrial development of the country so these were the various objectives for which privatization was encouraged then comes the various measures which were adopted for privatization contraction of public sector disinvestment sale of shares of public enterprises increase in private sector conversion of loans into shares is not necessary sick industries memorandum of understanding then comes the advantages of privatization reduction in economic burden increase in efficiency reduction in sense of irresponsibility scientific management reduction in political interference encouragement of new inventions then comes that what are the disadvantages of privatization industrial sickness has been considered to be one of the disadvantage of privatization lack of welfare class struggle increase in inequality opposition by the employees problem of financing increase in unemployment ignores the weaker sections of the society ignores the national importance then comes the public sector reforms so these reforms were undertaken and the whole public sector units were divided and they were given certain accolades just like navratans maharatans and mini ratans so navratans the example of uh, navratans companies were bpcl mtnl maharatans cil that is coal india limited ongc mini ratans bsnl itdtc etc then comes the globalization by globalization we reckon a process associated with increasing openness growing economic independence and deepening economic integration in the world economy reduction of trade barriers free flow of capital free flow of technology free movement of technology next part is the outsourcing system so it is a system of hiring business services from outside world it is the outsourcing practice so india has been a big beneficiary from the outsourcing practices in the recent past the companies such as infosys tcs wipro these companies has proven have proven their metal in the recent past and these are considered to be global mncs infosys has been the first company to be listed in the nasdaq the stock exchange american stock exchange for the it companies so the advantages of outsourcing include easy availability of cheap labor reasonable degree of skills there is a niche kind of market lack of 
कॉम्पिटिटिव कॉम्पिटिटर्स चीप एंड अबंडेंट अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ रॉ मटीरियल रेवोल्यूशनरी ग्रोथ ऑफ आई टी इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया फॉर ग्लोबलाइजेशन द वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज बीन अ वेरी पाइनियर स्टेप विच वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी फाइव as as of now more than 153 member countries are the part of world trade organization so it has been established in 1995 first january it was created by uruguay round negotiations 1986 to 1994 the headquarters so it was established with a budget of 185 million swiss francs the headquarters is in geneva then comes the objectives of wto the primary aim of wto is to implement the new world trade agreement to promote multilateral trade to promote free trade by abolishing tariff and non tariff barriers to enhance competitiveness among all trading partners so as to benefit consumers to increase the level of production and productivity to expand and utilize world resources in the most optimum manner to improve the level of living for the global population and speed up economic development of the member nations with this i would like to conclude that the various practices the various lpg liberalization privatization and globalization practices which were introduced in 1991 we all are fetching the fruits and we have seen a very significant growth after the introduction of lpg thank you